So I wander around the world. And these machen the us. And those criticize. And those are skeptical, etc., etc. And it's impossible not to be weakened a little bit, not to be influenced a little bit. Nobody likes to be laughed at. Nobody likes to be criticized. So what does one do who lives the Tachtonshebe Tachtonim in Australia? <laughs> it's more than just a joke what I'm going to tell you. There is a story going around the world that a Russian Agoy and a Frenchman Agoy and Le Havre came out from a clinic where there were specialists. And the three of them, Achmor and Islam, the specialists told them they've only got three months to live. So as they walked up out of the office of the specialist, they turned round to the Russian and said to him, what are you going to do now, the last three months of your life? At the Chagoy, Ivan. He said, I'm going to take all my money out of the bank and I'm going to buy up all the vodka that there is in Russia and I'm going to drink and bathe in it till I die. They turn around to the Frenchman and ask him, what are you going to do? So he said the same thing, I'm going to take all my money out of the bank and I'm going to live a life full of tigers. They both, both turn round La Havdal to the Yid and they say to him, Yankel, what are you going to do? So he said, I'm going to take out $4,000 from the bank and buy a round the world ticket. And I'm going to spend the next three months of my life seeking a second opinion. <laughs> to seek a second opinion. So somebody will ask me, you are Rav, you have colleagues, you have friends, or Shishivas, Tamidei Chachomim, was that as best to get women to the women to get a second opinion? Why didn't you go to them? So I want to tell you, it's been mentioned a number of times that Bishwil Noshim Sitkoni is Nigalo Avisenim and Mitzroim Ademor and Saita. You know what was, what made them Sitkoni is? Because of the apathy, some who didn't believe, they didn't have the Ruchnias in them to believe that the Goyal Tzedek, the Goyal Rishon is coming and going to redeem them. They didn't have the courage to accept the words of Moshe Rabbeinu. What did the Jewish women do? They came along into the slave camps and encouraged their husbands, their fathers. They encouraged them to believe that Mashiach is coming and coming now. I want to make one special Nikuda. The Goyal Rishon was Moshe Rabbeinu. Have you ever wondered why it is that Kodesh Baruch Hu chose a man that the Torah designates, as he said in this week's Sedra, Vani Araus Fosayim? Do you think Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't talk? Do you think Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't give Sikhes? Do you think Moshe Rabbeinu couldn't give an oration? He was a king, 40 years, he led in Kush. He 
was a great man with great talents. But you know what I think the Torah is telling us and what Moshe Rabbeinu says? There are certain things which the Goyal of Rishon could not say. It had to come at Yisahus Tato. He couldn't come and tell the Jewish people what they should do. It had to come a movement from within to understand what is the demand of the hour. Esa Shariko Esfem, what should call you? The Metro Sheikha tells us that at the time when these words were said, it was at the time of the Chorben Beis Hamidosh. And Ibn Yehu Anovi was running in the streets of Jerusalem. And he saw the destruction and the flow of blood. And a voice came down from heaven to Ibn Yehu Anovi. He said, Ibn Yehu, go to the quarrying of the Ovois and wake them up. Let them come and plead for the Jewish people before me. And Ibn Yehu went to the Moga Samach and he woke up, Avraham Yitzchot Yaakov. They asked him, why are you waking us up from the grave? And the Medrash says, Yehu Anovi was frightened to tell them, in case they say to him, how did you allow such a thing to happen in your lifetime? And then the Medrash goes on to tell us, that Avraham went up to Milo, Yitzchot went up to Milo, Yaakov went up to Milo, etc., etc. And no satisfactory answer was given to them. In those moments of tragedy, Ibn Yehovah Zanovi said, A voice was heard on high, a bitter lamenting and weeping. Do you know who was weeping? the mother of the people of Israel was weeping she was crying over her children what should have been written after that it's Boneha is plural for they are not there doesn't say that it says for he is not there Mother Rachel would not accept all the drama and finger, all the valid excuses, all the arguments and all the critics that told us we shouldn't act in this way, we shouldn't talk in this way, we shouldn't force the issue. A hackalon on this nimbus medrashim lernen and wait. Mother Rachel, she had the heart of a mother. And she was not happy. May I know you know, and she would not come be comforted. Why? Ki neno for he, Moshiach had not yet come. And when Jewish mothers weep because Moshiach is not here, then a voice comes down from heaven and says, Mini koilech mibechi. Don't weep anymore. You hold your tears from your face. Because if women get together and they cry to Hashem is Barach, we want Moshiach now, then an answer will come from heaven. There is hope for your future. And the Eibishter sagt zu, that generation your children will return once again to our Tzeno Agdusha, to the base Hamigdor Shashlishi. So I'll make my placard here. And on it will be written, Bishwil Noshin Tzitkonies, Nigalu Hadeh Hazeh, Megalos 